America's Pro Cup Tour here in Atlanta. We are here to see the Eurostars take on Atlanta Ozone in their fourth game of the series. My name's Charlie Blair and I'm joined here by Miranda Knowles. Lovely to be with you, Miranda. So great to be with you, Charlie. Let's get straight to it. Uh, Ozone, a really, really uh, impressive team with a really impressive legacy. 31 years at Nationals is a team that was formed uh, way back in 1984. Uh, never played the Eurostars before, but I've had a really great, a great run this season. Uh, what can we expect to see from them today? Well, I think we can expect to see lots of really high percentage offense and uh, spotted with a few hucks in there for sure. Lots of very uh, smart defenses, perhaps some junk sets as well. I'm very excited to watch them play. They, they've had a big summer already playing at Club Worlds uh, for the first time uh, in this decade. And uh, they also were just at US Open. And so I think that this is a great way for them to reinvigorate and get ready for the club series. Absolutely. I was talking to uh, Captain Kate Woodhurst earlier. They said their goals coming into this season was to aim for semis in, in every tournament. Haven't, haven't quite made that, but she said absolutely not discouraged at all. Very, very excited to get into this game and, and praises this, this current team this year for being one of the most energizing and forward-thinking teams um, that she's been part of. Who are the key playmakers on this Atlanta side today? So today, I think you'll see uh, some really excellent handling from number 22, Paula Seville. She was one of the big reasons for their epic takedown of Seattle Riot last year at Club Nationals. Uh, I also think you'll see some amazing, exciting plays from Catherine Wooten, the, the eldest stateswoman on the team. Long, long time Ozone player and just an amazing player, some, somehow at the top of her game, even though she's closer to my age than yours. <laughs> And um, Ozone also today missing missing a few big names. Um, yes. So we've unfortunately lost uh, Emily Lloyd very recently to um, to a knee injury. Uh, Mira Walker also um, Team USA won a Team USA gold in London and part of the Atlanta Soul squad. Um, and as we can see here on the roster, um, three other big names missing today. Um, could you guys talk us through how that's going to impact the the Ozone roster today? Yeah, what's good about Ozone, m many things are good about Ozone, including the fact that they do utilize their entire roster. So even when they are missing big players, uh, including Maddie Fry, as well as those injured players, they will still be firing on all their cylinders. You just might see different faces doing it. Absolutely. And uh, Eurostar is coming into this game um, feeling like they didn't play to their potential against Fury. Um, they go into this game intending to, to clean up those individual mistakes and unforced errors. We saw um, talking to, to, to Captain Bex Forth earlier. Um, she said it's just about going back to basics, being disciplined, um, making sure we're, we're, we're working hard and not clogging and, and finding that space. Sure, there's nothing wrong with the way they were trying to play in the Bay Area. It's just the execution from... from my vantage point on my couch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that if they stick with their strategy but increase their execution, everything will be great for the Eurostars. I just can't wait to watch them play in person. Me neither. And here we are about to start the game. Who have we got on this uh, first Ozone line, Miranda? So this looks like Kate Woodhurst, Kate Travaglini, Kayla Emmerich, Paige Carver, Sam Doherty, Jim, Jimmy Matsunaga, and Andrea Palmer. They've got one of their coaches out there, David Berendez, a longtime Chain Lightning and uh, local Atlanta and North Carolina player who's out there on the line with them. In addition to their other coaches, Chris Goodson and Martin Aguilera, Martin works just down the hall from me at the Paideia School. Uh, so they've got a really fantastic coaching staff, three very uh, accomplished athletes and coaches on their sideline. Fantastic. It looks like Ozone will be starting on, on defense for this opening point of the game. These first points are always so exciting. You know, the offense would really love to get a clean score, no turnovers. And this is also just an opportunity for the defense. If you can break in that first point, it really shifts the momentum immediately to, to the Ozone side, as it would be in this point. Yeah, Euros guys are going to want to come out all guns firing. It's going to be really important for them and, um, after the, that, the disappointment of the Fury game. Mm -hmm. um, they really want to prove the potential of this squad, just as we saw in the Riot game. Right, so the players I like watching are Paula Bass and who else is out there? Katie Forth, 
Let's check out what they've got. So we have Milik pulling up the disc, centering to Bass. Bass, Asher and Milik again for that reset. Big fakes from Milik, finding KT4 free on the sideline. Great continuation there from Melvin. Then Milik powering up that line, but there's a call. Hit called. You'll see the international hand signals being used by probably both teams. So many of them played at Worlds for Ozone or for their respective countries on the Eurostars. This back in with Milik, finding four from the sideline. She's looking long, and here goes the put. Milik's tracking it down with loads of time and loads of space. And there we have it, the first point on the board for Eurostars. Oh, that lovely, nice. clean point that we were after, Miranda. Absolutely, and you see that the space that I believe it was Katie Forth threw to, she could have easily put it down the line to a cutter in the same third, and instead she has it bend around, but she's clearly aiming to the middle third of the field. Andrea Palmer was in good defensive position on the open side, but the throw goes over her and into a good space where only the receiver can catch it. Yeah, we're seeing that more and more in the game. I know when I first started playing Frisbee, um, that was quite an unconventional throw. But that tactic of uh, sending a throw that looks like it's going down the open side and then just Doesn't. intentionally <laughs> intentionally peeling and dying back into that break side is something we're seeing more and more. Yes, and I really like it. My, my least favorite thing as a coach is when a thrower puts the disc out of bounds. And I think that aiming for the middle of the field increases the chances that your teammate is going to catch it. When it goes out of bounds, she can't do anything about that. And so if she has to make a great play, it better be in bounds. So Eurostar is set to pull. They, what defense do you think they'll come with, Charlie? Um, I think they'll be looking to just get out there and, and get in Ozone's and get in Ozone's face. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to just see a, a, a tough person D on this first point. I'd like to see that too. There's certainly some players <laughs> capable of getting big blocks on the on the Eurostars, capable of making some big plays. Yeah, you can see Demand Sky on the line, hungry for it. Yes. Doing those little <laughs> short quick shuffles. So this is India Stubbs taking down to Catherine Wooten. Over to Marissa Hicks. Marie Previe making an undercut. Looking downfield. Looks off Lily Ponitz. India Stubbs up the line. In the middle to Kate Hines, back to Wooten. Over to India, to Hicks. Ozone patient in their end zone set. Paula Seville, just outside the end zone. Back swinging through India Stubbs to Marie Previer. Into the end zone, nice clean point for Ozone as well. With Kate Hines scoring that point. Yeah, really lovely solid point from, from Ozone and, and those experienced handlers ex expressing their talent exactly as we expected them to. For sure, Paula Seville uh, sort of came of age. She started out pi playing at Paideia School along with India Stubbs and then Paula went up to the University of Michigan and then to Boston Brute Squad winning a national championship before coming back home to Atlanta and rejoining Ozone. Something happened on that point that I was really hoping would happen, which was a Damanskaya Wooten matchup. <laughs> and that is some serious height. <laughs> and they're both handlers, which is so exciting. I, I can't tell you how nice it is to have a nice tall handler who is pretty much always open for the reset in tall space. But now with them guarding each other, sort of changes changes things a bit. Yeah, Demand Sky has proved to be such a weapon for the Eurostars. Like you say, to have such a great target, um, which we're used to finding it in the end zone, uh, to have that on the resets is invaluable. You, you always know that you'd be able to keep that disc in play. Right, so Demand Sky is six foot three, is that correct? That's correct. Now, yeah. Catherine Wooten isn't that tall, but she is tall, and I believe the tallest person on Ozone. And so I think that'll be a very interesting matchup, since neither of them probably match up against someone of their own height <laughs> very often. So thank goodness for the Pro America's Cup tour for the new challenges it provides. Yes. Nowhere like this to showcase a matchup <laughs> like that. Sinajini with the pull for Ozone. So we have Ozone looking for their first break of the game as Paula Bass receives the disc. Laying it off to Milik. Ushering those undercuts, getting a bit congested, but finds Lisa Prado on the sideline. 
who lays it off to her Spanish teammate, Lucio Otal. And Bass puts up the hook. We've got Milik chasing it down. And a phenomenal full stretch layout from Maya Milik. What athleticism. Now, I, I also really appreciate this throw. You, you notice the disc is flowing from right to left across the field, which for a right-handed player is normally a backhand. But Bass throwing the inside out forehand into that space, which is almost too far for Milik, but not so. <laughs> Yeah, Bass really put in some zing on that disc. But she did. What a gorgeous layout and really lovely space from Bass. Does she prefer her forehand in general, do you think? Or is that just what happened on that point? I think she does, yeah. But uh, Bass is a kind of player that all of the pitch is open to her. <laughs> she's got an exquisite repertoire of throws. Um, and she's, she's also got a lot of flare throws, which she uses very intelligently. And I'm excited to see more of those pop out in this match. Of course, she's quite the field marshal and obviously has the full arsenal of throws with scubers aplenty in previous matches. So exactly. we'll, we'll hope she shows us some overheads as well, not just the normal forehands and backhands. Yeah, Bass is a great player. She's been playing for about 12 years, which is the same as other members on this Eurostar squad. But Bass is also our youngest player, uh, only 23 years old, started playing Frisbee uh, at 10 in, in Utrecht in the Netherlands and uh, has most recently represented Yaka this year at the World Club Championships in Cincinnati. Right. Pull coming in, Ozone's O-line back on the field, Stubbs out to Wooten against what appears to be a 1-3-3 defense from the Eurostars, back over to Stubbs on the forehand sideline to Seville. Eurostars trapping it on that side, making things difficult for Ozone, and causes a miscue to Stubbs. Eurostars take over at midfield. And we have Kublitska with the disc for the Eurostars. Finding Dem Demanskaya. They've played together before as a, in part of the Mo Moscow club, Cosmic Girls. For Rolfi, swinging across the pitch to Bexforth. Oh, doesn't like what she sees upfield and lays it back off to Farolfi. Swinging it quickly to Demanskaya who Again, can't seem to find anyone in the end zone. Quick resets there. <laughs> Nikki Frian. Nikki Frian, welcome. Welcome to Atlanta, <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> Lovely, great hustle there from the Eurostars with that zone defense. Um, I know uh, the Atlanta ozone long game is something that the Eurostars are very keen to shut down. And the zone did a great job there of plugging those long options and putting pressure on the handlers. Yes, and they just did such a nice job also maintaining possession, taking as many passes as necessary to then just march it down the field into their end zone. Nikki Prian, one of my top favorite players in the world right now, watching her on the Eurostars tour last year as well as this year. Um, she often draws the hardest matchups on the field. So I saw her guarding Robin Wiseman, mm -hmm. then I saw her guarding Jack Berjou yep. and Serge Sarah Griffith. So three really different players, all powerful, all fast, great throwers, great cutters. And she got the better of them a few times and I'm excited to see who she matches up against today. Yeah, really, really phenomenal. Absolutely great speed on, on Nikki Prayan and a very intelligent player. Yeah, she's able to position herself in such a way that teammates believe her targets are open and then she makes up ground and makes the plays very difficult for them. So I think she's taking a sub and letting the second D-line come in for the Eurostars. Ozone leaving a few of their O-line out and subbing in some new faces, Matsunaga, Palmer, Carver, Doherty, to join Travaglini, Wooten, and Stubbs. Palmer catching the pull. To Stubbs, over to Doherty. So Stubbs in the middle of the field. Pick call downfield. Working things out, resetting back where players were before the pick was called. Subs taps the desk, disc back in. Over to Carver on the backhand side. Nice handler motion from Ozone to Wooten, who just barely overthrows Doherty. 
It's a little bit too far and Eurostars will be looking to, to take this break now and gain a significant margin early on in the game. Something they haven't quite managed to do yet on the tour. So Milik to fourth. KD4 finds Ines Bugel from Portugal. She's uh, only really played mixed. There's no women seen in Portugal, but entering the top flight straight away now. Issa Prada finding Milik on the sideline. He sends it to back to Brugel in the end zone. And another fantastic conversion there from the Eurostars. And Brugel getting away from Paige Carver, which is no easy task. Carver, one of the speediest players on Ozone. And you see that Brugel gets opened by quite a bit. Prada is able to, or no, Milik is able to put it out easily into the end zone for Brugel. Another player I've been extremely impressed with coming from Portugal, like you said, a scene that I, I've never heard much about, only mixed there. It must be such a treat for her to play on the Eurostars tour. Absolutely, and also it's mainly a, a beach scene. Um, there is a lot of beach in Portugal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been there on some of the beaches. It's gorgeous. I wish I had played some ultimate. I only had my husband to throw it. Right? Man, it would be hard to give up as well if you had miles and miles of uh, golden sand. I'd be, it'd be a hard, hard sell to me to convert to grass, but... Um, yeah, Portugal, uh, she's represented Portugal mixed in uh, both Dubai and Royan last year. Portugal placed fourth in Dubai and, and eighth in Royan last year. And uh, plays of her uh, local team, Ufa. Mm -hmm. Has she talked at all about what it's like to play women's and compared to having a mostly a mixed background? Is she enjoying having that opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. She... Uh, mainly at home, it says she handles a lot more. But as you can see, she's a phenomenally athletic player. And oh, she's especially on defense. Open all the time. Open all the time. All right, Seville receiving this pull out to Woodhurst for Perivier, the youngest player on the Ozone squad, just starting her freshman year. Out to Hicks. Back to Woodhurst, swinging the disc to Emmerich. Looking downfield for Seville, oh. bidding if she stayed in, it's a goal. I think, I think not. I think it's out of bounds. calling yeah. it out of bounds. But and really we're going to see a replay on this. Oh, that's oh, very really close. She effort. did a great job trying to leave that right foot down, but she felt she was out, and this is a self-officiated sport, and that's what we call good spirit of the game. If you're not sure, it goes the other way. So Eurostars will have the full 70 to work. So we have Olivia Hauser from Switzerland on the disc. Looking for Bex fourth up the line. <laughs> Great bid there to keep the disc alive. Finds Priyan. Priyan looking to reset. And fourth takes a shot to Yanni Kappelman in the end zone. Great read there from Yanni Kappelman. It's just gorgeous. And what I love is you watch on this actual oh, reception from Bex Forth on the reset. She actually oh. could catch it standing still or going backwards. Instead, as she catches it, she actually gains some forward momentum that will eventually drive her into the eventual hut, putting you know a few extra yards on it. Oh, here we see that Seville play just barely out of bounds. Nice catch from Bex Forth to set this up. And then here, she's going to catch that reset and come forward into it to lead into that hook. Very nice read here. Great work Kappelman. from Yanni. Marissa Hicks has good position, but just doesn't quite put a body on Kappelman to really prevent that catch. Really nice for Yanni Kappelman to be having a, a good tour. She was actually initially part of the series last year. Um, but unfortunately, tore her ACL, as ah, many of us. Club. Welcome to the welcome club. Welcome to the club. It's not a fun club, but it's a star-studded, I believe. <laughs> and unfortunately, like you mentioned, Mir Mira Walker, um, probably the biggest star in Atlanta, is also part of that club. Mm. So hopefully she'll have a, as successful a uh, return as Kappelman. Yeah, shout out to Mira. She's kindly hosting us at the moment. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, with her two lovely doggies. Yes, <laughs> and her partner, I think. <laughs> yes, we have yet to meet him. He comes but back But mostly tonight. the dogs. <laughs> But, um, yeah, Yanni's worked incredibly hard to get back fit and feisty yeah. for, this, for this tour. 
uh, against wonderful. against all the odds, all the doctor's advice, she's trained herself back into fitness. So how long ago was her surgery? Um, it was on the day that she was meant to fly out of US uh, <laughs> last year, heartbreaking. as irony would have it. Um, but she's a personal trainer herself, so incredibly determined. She knew exactly what to do when good, I interviewed good her. Good access to the gym. Right. <laughs> So here we have the score. Eurostars are pulling up 5-1 to Ozone. Uh, Charlie, what, how would you recommend Ozone to bounce back from a start like this? Um, I think, as we can see there from the, from the way Ozone turned over before, it's just about tightening up a little because Eurostars are, are coming out as they would have wanted to against Fury with that really strong O-line, uh, that conversion rate on the D-line that they weren't getting against Fury. So uh, Ozo needs to stay in this game by by making sure they're slotting those points away. Yes, I totally agree. And just execution errors for them as well. It sort of reminds me how the Eurostars played in the Bay. So hopefully they execute a little better and then maybe put a little junk look or something different if they do turn it over to make the Eurostars D-line think about it on O. Stubbs starting in the middle. over to Travaglini, who just misses it as it goes through her hands. Looked like a little miscue on, on who was going to catch the pull and start off the motion. Unfortunate for the Ozone offense. Yeah, unfortunate as we were just discussing. Um, exactly not the start they wanted to that point. So Bass picking up the disc and hitting fourth straight away in the end zone. <laughs> just a very speedy cone cut from Katie Forth. Katie <sighs> Hard Forth to stop. and Bex. Uh, you may think that it's the same person on the pitch, but actually it's it's the fourth sisters, the, the twins, have been at the top of the game for, for so many years now, over 20 years experience, and both absolutely incredible athletes. And viewers, if they look familiar to you, it's not an illusion. They're not only from Great Britain, they're also from Houston, Texas. So <laughs> they've uh, been playing a long time down here in the South and helped to start Texas Showdown when that was first a team not so long ago and have been part of the Austin Soul, uh, most recently in the women's pro Austin games. Torch? Austin Torch, yes. sorry. The Atlanta Soul, the <laughs> Austin Torch. It's confusing because the Austin AUDL men's team, right. open team, is the Austin Soul. Right. The Atlanta <laughs> women's team is the Atlanta Soul. <laughs> so there's a lot of soul down here in the South. But yes, the Fourth Sisters are part of the Austin Torch that we got to have here for a wonderful pro game against the Atlanta Soul. Torch getting the better of the soul in that game and maybe a little bit of a grudge match for some of these <laughs> Ozone Soul crossover players. It was an players. incredible game. It was. Yeah. It was quite a game to call from the booth. <laughs> All right, so Ozone back on offense. You know, maybe maybe it's time to go old school and huck and play D. <laughs> you know, you've got Wooten out there. Give her the rock and let's send somebody fast. How about Marissa Hicks or Kate Hines? Let's see what we do. Ah, but just when I say it, of course. Oh, here, oh, it, comes. here it comes. Regardless of the zone look. Oh, I'm pre so close there. Travaglini makes a great catch to Hines. Back to Travaglini, to Woodhurst in the end zone. That's what they needed. Fantastic. That's exactly what they needed. And stretching the athleticism of the, of the Eurostars, which is something coming into the game, Kate Woodhurst said they were very excited about. Yes, the athleticism is is really great out here. It is so nice to see the development of the women's game where these real athletes that could be playing absolutely any sport at a collegiate or a pro level are out here choosing ultimate. It is just so fun. Yeah, I'm sure it's the case on the Atlanta team, but for the Eurostar I've seen many converts from other, other sports at very high levels. Olivia Hauser was a, a former pro squash player. I believe she won the national titles in 2008 in Switzerland. Um, and brings that discipline straight to Frisbee. She says she would be out there smashing balls against the wall without a thousand backhands, a thousand forehands. Easy peasy. Yes, yeah, sometimes when we're doing training for my Paideia girls in, in the uh, preseason, I take squishy discs and I have them just rip backhands <laughs> against the, the garage wall in the basement of the school because that's the space that we have and it's fun to throw things that really hard against so walls. So fun. <laughs> Yeah, so there's there's lots of crazy converts. Catherine Wooten actually used to be an elite swimmer in high school and in Columbus, Georgia, and we're so glad she came over to Ultimate when she went to UGA. Cinegini with the pull, Eurostars on offense. Lucy Hotel picking up the disc, laying off to Milik. 
You can see her looking long. She's so forthgoing with those bright orange boots. But <laughs> <laughs> two, three, Rained two look in. from Ozone. <laughs> two up front, three in the middle, and two deep, just in case the Eurostars try to stretch it. And Ozone containing the Eurostars well here. They're quite deep now. Milik popping it over the top to Bass. Some quick give and goes. Bass again looking for that eye over there. <laughs> there she pulls out that flare <laughs> that I was hoping for. Great throw there to puncture through that hole, but unfortunately can't find momentum through the cup. And again, a scuba to Milik on the sideline. Great vision there from Milik, opening up the pitch, and you can see the white shirt streaking down now. Some quick give and goes between Hotel and Fourth, finding Brugel. Beautiful break from Brugel. Look at that space there for Milik on the line, but unfortunately no continuation until Katie Fourth steps up to the plate. Looks like a pick was called somewhere what? at the front really of the end zone. Bad. Sammy Doherty trying to stay with Katie Fourth. If anyone can do it, it's Doherty. But there was a pick involved, other people around the play, so it'll go back to Milik. Milik tacks it in. Looking to hit the end zone straight away, Visa Prada. Visa Prada, uh, <laughs> there it is, the octopus celebration she <laughs> promised. She's dedicating that to Polvo and her uh, women's team, Paracas, back home in Spain. It's a nice goal, a nice little away cut to shake her defender just into enough space so that the young athletic Josie Veal can't make one of her outstanding plays on that one. And great to see Prado on the scoreboard. She was definitely selected for her phenomenal pace. Um, if you just look at the stats at World Beach last year, she, she ripped it up for, for Spain. And actually, funnily enough, her and Lucy Hotel, Lucy Hotel had 22 assists in there. Prada had 22 scores, so I'm sure that was a connection that Bex Forth was keen to exploit when choosing this Eurostars team. Yes, yeah, so can you tell me a little bit about the selection and how different players are, are elected onto this team? Yeah, the application process, uh, the form was very long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lots of questions about uh, your wider engagement with the community as well as your play and your accolades and uh, your character as well, and I know there are lots of very, very unfamiliar faces here, not just for, for a US audience, but for a European audience too. Um, lots of players really have been almost plucked from obscurity. Uh, and that's been on the basis of, of, of references um, and recommendations from coaches. Many of these girls only applied for the Eurostars on the last day of the deadline, thinking that they weren't good enough, but being convinced by their coaches too. Yes, Ob obscure no more. They are up 7-2 on the local Atlanta Ozone here and on defense. The big Dumanskaya as Catherine Wooten puts a beautiful huck out to Paula Seville. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And you can see the, the Eurostars clapping. That there's, there's not much you can do about that. That's straight out of the textbook. Wonderful pool play there. Yes, Wooten undeterred by the giant mark of the Russian and heads it deep to the sprinting Paula Seville, who usually is a handler. So Nikki Prian, one of the top defenders, probably wasn't expecting her to go deep. So that's a great play call by Ozone. Perhaps one of their coaches, David Brendas or Martin Aguilera had a role in that. And now they get to try and call a defense, maybe back to that 2-3-2. Two, two. The Eurostars at least did have to take more time on that junk look. I don't think it's something they've seen from other teams yet on mm -hmm. this tour. So uh, while they have certainly seen zone looks, I don't remember seeing them against a 2-3-2. So that is definitely different, though. The last time the Eurostars just threw to the first open person and did the right things, as great ultimate players do. And I think it's a very good look to slow the Eurostars down, just to stop that momentum. You can see how buoyed everyone on the pitch was, not just Ozone then, by, by such a quick, phenomenal point. Yes, that was certainly what the doctor ordered for Ozone, and it would be very nice for them to be able to get a break back in this first half. We'll, we're playing a game to 15 here, so the Eurostars, if they get to eight, or if Ozone happens to get to eight first, we will take half at that point. Trevaglini with the pull. Milik receives, then off to Bass in the center. 
finding Brugel. Again, the orange boots of KD4 streaking towards the end zone. It comes under for Scarampi. Gets it off the line back to Scarampi. He swings straight away to Milik. Milik wanting to hit that end zone, but treasuring the disc. Back to Scarampi. And collects again and shoots. Brugel chasing down. <laughs> Not quite in. Brugel wrapping lovely around her mark there. Great pick up from Scarampi, keeping the disc alive. And that's the point for the Eurostars. Eurostars flirting with the end zone for quite some time there. Yeah, nice right. end zone defense from all of Ozone. You see fourth almost drop, but just bobble the reset. Gets it over for the swing to Scarampi, who eventually finds Bas on a nice seven cut or elbow cut back to the middle. And she does have her toes down as she makes that catch, so that is indeed in the end zone. And that's Eurostars taking the half. 8-3. Miranda, what, what do you make of this first half? Well, it's certainly not what Ozone would have liked, um, but I think, honestly, their adjustments are really within themselves. Uh, the Eurostars are very good, but Ozone needs to think about their own game, about their throws and catches and executions, um, and think about how they can maybe generate some blocks in this second half. They're obviously going to have to get some breaks to get this game closer. Uh, or obviously within a win. Because of the point scheme here, Ozone would, it like, would like to at least lose by less, less than, <laughs> they would like to lose by one, yep. or certainly not more than three, to maximize the points that the American teams get for this. Yeah, absolutely. Team Europe currently leading the way, 4-3. Uh, they were headed into that game in the Bay Area, 4-0 up, Team America, no points on the board, but Simon Francisco Fury doing everything they could to get Team America back in the game. Leave it to Fury to blow somebody out, right? 15-10 <laughs> 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 from Fury gets, gets the Americans on the board. And we'd like to at least not give those three points back to the Eurostars Tour in this game. So hopefully Ozone will bring it back closer to within one or three, or maybe even come back to win in the second half. So you see, we've just been given uh, the stats from our, from our little masterful stat statistician elves. <laughs> um, for Ozone, we have uh, Catherine Wooten making, making a big impact on the pitch. Yes, she has one assist, but she also has some hockey assists out there too, where you throw it almost to the end zone and then the next pass is a goal or it really puts your team in position to score. So Catherine Wooten still bringing it and it's, it's such a joy to see. And nice to see an even spread of the stats as well with, with, with everyone getting involved, no one player dominating. And that's very true of the Eurostars stats over, over the course of this campaign as well. Um, I think in the Riot game, there wasn't one player who didn't, have, who didn't have a stat on the board. That's amazing. And that, I mean, that's, that's exactly how you want to use an all-star team is to give everybody a little bit rather than lean on one or the other. And I think that's how some of the best teams here in the United States Riot, Brute Squad, Fury, uh, that's how they roll, is they play everybody and really utilize everyone, and everyone's on the scoreboard. And that's certainly what the teams I coach aspire to be, too. Yeah, you mentioned the teams you coach. I know you're a <laughs> high school teacher. Many, many they are. Many, many they are. Um, you mentioned before the game that you have many alumni from Padilla High School representing on Atlanta Ozone tonight. Who are they? So the, the main one that I've coached is Josie Beal. I'm extremely proud of her. I got to coach her all four years of high school. Uh, and she's now down at UGA playing with Marie Previer and Alex Fairley. And there are some other Paideia women on Ozone. Uh, unfortunately, they graduated from Paideia before I came back to teach. Uh, so yeah, Paula Seville, Lane Cedor, India Stubbs, all, all Paideans like myself. I actually graduated <laughs> from there as well. Kate Hines graduated from Paideia, but unfortunately for everyone, only played basketball and soccer there, came to Ultimate later when she went to UGA. So it's great that lots of the, the new roster entering this Ozone team already know each other very well. They're entering with lots of connections already. 
Yes, there's getting to be much more of sort of a homegrown feel to women's ultimate here in Georgia, where Ozone women are coaching local high school and college teams, and they're actually training them up to be their teammates in the future. And you're seeing that a lot, which is such a joy. Women from Georgia Tech, Kennesaw State University, Georgia College and State University, Emory University, UGA, everybody's playing a role on, on Ozone these days. Even some Florida teams sending some great players up our way. And it's, it's getting to be quite a fun time. We're, we're aiming to get those high schools up and going too. So Paidea, Brookwood, Grady, everyone can be sending players eventually onto Ozone. That's awesome. And so what's the significance then of these players being able to play on, on this kind of tour? This is just amazing. I, I think for the girls I coach, this is the dream. This is what we aspire to, to be, is on a big stage like this, in a stadium, under the lights, on live stream around the world. And it, it's just so meaningful for them to see, you know, kind of their big sisters, the people that they used to play with, their coaches are out here. Um, and they get to see these amazing women from around the world that maybe someday they could go and play in a world's tournament or an international tournament and play against some of these people or the people they are coaching back home. And it's just a window into such an amazing community that I, I, hope, I hope that my players can be a part of someday. Cool, so we're gonna take a quick break and uh, we'll be back with you shortly with some more exciting stuff in the second half. So welcome back. We're here to honour the local empowerment champions in Atlanta, one of which is uh, my fellow co-commentator Miranda Ruffnose. She's being presented with the Empowerment Champion Award by Yanni Kapamun and Sarah Melvin. And Miranda is someone who for many needs no introduction. She's done so much for the Ultimate community over the years. Um, she's turned Pardea Girls Ultimate Program Grove into an absolute powerhouse. She's developed players that can perform at an elite level. She encourages them to give back to their community on top of that too. Miranda and, and Groove have partnered with Inspire Shalom, an organization, Inspire Shalom, I believe, an organization that provides enrichment activities to refugees in Clarkston, Georgia. Today's ever-present and growing talent elevates the youth of the youth scene, both high school and YCC. Miranda also coaches Atlanta Hustle and Atlanta Chain Lightning. Welcome back to the fourth game in the Pro Americas Cup Series as Eurostars take on Atlanta Ozone. They currently lead the way 8-3. It was a phenomenal first half and we're going to take a quick look at the best moments. So an outstanding showing from both teams, really showing their flair in this match, but Eurostars coming out 
lovely and clean, just as they'd hoped to make up for their performance against Fury. Some great athleticism from both sides there. Fantastic attempt to toe in from Ozone. Huge bids from Bex Forth there. Hungry for the end zone. Here's hoping Atlanta Ozone can clean up the offense as they were doing at the end of that first half and really bring this game back to the Eurostars. See a lovely quick final point there from Ozone. But Eurostars currently keeping their foot on the pedal. So congratulations, Miranda. <laughs> Thank <saw> you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Receive was... your Empowerment Champions Award. Very, very <laughs> much deserved. Thank you. It was a, a surprise this morning when I got that email. It was such a pleasant surprise. And especially to be honored alongside, but, you know, virtually alongside Rachel Scales and Evelina Pierce, two women who are having a huge impact on the community. Evelina, unsurprisingly, also a Paidea grad who went away to college and came back an ultimate powerhouse who's actually not here because she works for Girls on the Run, another amazing female empowerment organization around the country and taking a stronghold here in Atlanta. And Rachel Scales, who <laughs> also has a Paidea connection. Her daughter is actually one of my athletes at Paidea. Oh, She's lovely. currently a ninth grader. She played junior high ultimate and played up with the JV on Groove last year. And Rachel does so much work. She still plays in leagues and at Grandmasters, Nationals and she organizes all of our middle school leagues, especially looking out for young girls who maybe are a little bit hesitant to come out and play. Rachel creates a space for every single young woman who wants to play this sport. And we are gonna be reaping the benefits from that for a long time here in this city. And Ozone, I'm sure will be thankful for it. There's, there's some girl out there on the middle school fields who's gonna be on Ozone in five to 10 years. That's absolutely, very exciting. <laughs> that's absolutely wonderful. And, and what this tour is all about is providing platforms for all women to be able to play this wonderful game. Yeah, people ask me sometimes if there's film of me playing, and there really isn't because there was no film of anyone <laughs> playing Ultimate back in the day. But, you know, there's still very little film of people playing outside the United States. And so I am just so happy that we as consumers of film get to have this resource to see other styles of play and these phenomenal women, like you said, coming out of obscurity and into the limelight. Ozone receiving here with India Stubbs centering to Catherine Wooten. Back to Stubbs. Wooten hard upline cut. Up to Doherty. Looks off hit, Hicks, back to Wooten. Over to Stubbs. For Previer on a lovely timed continue pass. Into India and a well read hook to Sam Doherty. <laughs> Wonderful point there for Ozone and getting that break straight off the box as we enter this second half. Yeah, very nice clean O point for Ozone. Definitely what they needed. Marie Previer here who made that great cut and got the disc back to Stubbs. She is actually a second generation Ozone player. Her mom, Dawn, played for many years on Ozone and unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Marie's dad also played on Chain Lightning and is a great supporter of Atlanta Ult Ultimate now with the hustle and for Chain and of course Ozone. Marie's brother, Jack, plays for me on the hustle oh, cool. and for me on Chain Lightning. But uh, we all know who the star of this generation is. It's Marie, and the star of the last Parivier generation <laughs> was certainly Dawn. So Ozone very proud of these Pariviers here. Yeah, Parivier making a fantastic adjustment there. Keppelman went straight up the line to plug that deep look that she, that she was looking for, but had, had no issues finding a free stubs, and <laughs> he, he didn't hesitate to put it straight to the end zone. Those Stubbses are yet another family who is quite storied and ultimate, and we're so glad to have India holding down the home front back in Paidea land in Atlanta where they all began. What a wonderful legacy and here's Bass now up the line to Skirampi but just 
tipped over the top of Scrampy's huge frame. Perhaps a little bit of the wind in this stadium playing with the disc. Sinajini picks up and doesn't hesitate. Puts it directly to the end zone to Travaglini. Who oh. always wants the disc coming her way. A merciless counter attack there from Ozian. Beautiful, beautiful cross pitch disc. And again, look how buoyed they are. That's exactly the kind of momentum shift that the Ozone were looking for out of the, the coming out of the second half. Of course, 8-5, a big difference from 8-3. So Eurostars may be calling a timeout here to think about things and sort of stymie this comeback, stop the momentum. Yeah, it seems as we come out of the second half, we've almost had a role reversal. Ozone really cleaning up their game and, and uh, the Eurostars making some unforced errors. And just as the heavens begin to open now. Yes, as I was walking back from the field, it, it, there were some ominous clouds over in the north end of, oh, of wow, the field. Oh, wow, I can and see them coming in now, yeah. Here they come. This is kind of a classic yeah. Atlanta thing. In the evening, in the summertime, you get these thunderstorms. And we hope it's just rain and not lightning. If it is lightning, obviously, we'll get the players on, mm. off the Are field the first for safety. But we will yep. we'll certainly play through rain. <laughs> as it's coming down. Have the Eurostars played in rain yet this tour? I don't think no, so. No, yet, no, no, no. So this could be this could be part of the, the changing tide for Ozone. Perhaps yeah, it definitely feels like a the weather. bit of pathetic fallacy <laughs> <laughs> descending upon us here. The tide has really changed. The wind's really ripped up very quickly. The, the crowd here in the stadium are, are running for cover. Well, they should not be too soft and definitely stay here <laughs> and watch this game because it's it's closer now than it's been in a long time. Yeah, it's about to get very competitive. And it does look like the wind is blowing. Perhaps it's a cross it's kind wind. kind of whipping. You can see the flag over in the yeah, distance. Yeah, the American flag is directly across from us, and it's sort of changing directions. If anything, it's blowing from left to right on your screen, but probably a bit more of a crosswind. We'll see how the Eurostars treat it. If this is the downwind end zone, maybe they will send it downfield, see what happens. Wooten with a big forehand the pull. The Eurostars receive the pull as the heavens really do pour open on them now. Dimanskaya watching it hit the ground. You notice when players stop catching the pull, that's a sign that there's definitely some hesitation there. <laughs> Finding Kreeing on the line, is, it almost becomes Hard to see the pitch with the rain so thick as Hauser throws down her hat. <laughs> Things getting serious. Kappelman and a point block there for Ozone on Yanni Kappelman. Sinajini with that good mark. And you know, with the rain, players are really stressing to grip the disc tightly, and a tight mark can really go a long way. Wooten, fearless, takes a forehand across the field. Looking for stubs. Hauser went for it and maybe feels that she was tripped up as she was trying to get the D. Foul call, deep offensive foul against Sinajini. And the rain is coming down in sheets. Absolutely lashing down. And it looks and I like I think they've agreed delay. to suspend play for a bit. Unsurprising. So we'll give it a wait on the play for the lightning to pass, hopefully. You know, this came in very quickly and hopefully will leave very quickly. As we can still see some light sky in the distance. Maybe we'll return to this game after 20 minutes. And welcome back here to Atlanta to a very different second half to the first. Uh, we're now under the darkness of the clouds, the floodlights are gleaming and a very, very sodden pitch and players return to restart this game. Amanda, that breaking play might prove a bit pivotal, much like it does in tennis in Wimbledon. Um, the That's thunder right. came rolling in, as did the Ozone comeback, just as the, just as the game uh, was stopped in play. Do you think that will halt Ozone's momentum or as Atlanta locals, they're very much used to uh, this kind of weather and that's, won't be perturbed. That's right. You know, many of these players have grown up in AFDC summer leagues where this happens literally every Tuesday <laughs> and Thursday evenings throughout the summer. So they could certainly be used to this. Um, we're down to 
a light monsoon at this point, <laughs> whereas <laughs> there was a rather heavy one right after halftime. Um, remember Ozone on a two-point comeback to making it 8-5 uh, after they were only at three at half. So, yeah, I, I think this probably favors Ozone. There's definitely a lot of <laughs> experience with wet hands here in the south, whether it's from the rain or from sweat. Uh, people put climbing chalk on, they wear gloves, uh, they've got wristbands on, everything you can do to keep your hands uh, on the disc when you need to. And yeah, sorry. even more so, the Ozone is on defense, and so they get to pull, which is a great field advantage in weather like this. Uh, you see that oftentimes is that the team that's on D stays on D because they get short field turnovers and it's much easier to score after those. Yeah, absolutely. Those are my thoughts exactly coming back into this half, how that wet disc is going to play a pivotal role potentially. Do you think we're likely to see that whole, the long game with people being a bit too scared, maybe wanting to play a bit more conservative and be a bit more sure? Or yeah, you might see some field position played, uh, less possession-based offense and more, more position on the field. Uh, so you wouldn't be surprised to see some more hucks from Stubbs or, of course, Wooten here on Ozone. Wooten gets a nice undercut from Matsunaga. Unfortunately, passes it to the other team just behind the intended receiver, Josie Beal. Zero yeah. stars back on offense. Laying it off there to Kublitska in the middle. Finding Skarampi streaking under. Eurostar's looking quite close to the disc right now. Around to find fourth again. And here we see the Eurostar's start to stretch, but the play slowed down. Dimanskaya wrapping around with her big reach to find fourth on the line. And fourth shoots straight away to Hauser. He can't unfortunately chase that one down, but a nice look there from fourth. Yeah, just a bit too far, and you wonder if the cutters are a little bit cold after having to sit out for 20 minutes during the delay, uh, or if the disc is wet and it didn't quite go where fourth wanted it to go. Regardless, Stubbs jogging the disc back up to aim to go to the full 70. Nice, nice slashing cut from Matsunaga. Looking for Stubbs, nice handler defense by fourth. Count must be getting high. Find Stubbs on the bailout. Over to Hicks with a very nice shot. To Beal who tries to make a one-handed grab and maybe a little bit of a misread. Should have come from, should have come from two hands. Instead just one isn't able to make the play. Yeah, shame she wasn't able to connect there with that slippery disc, but really great defense from the Eurostars. Really tight on those handle marks. Nikki Priya in there. Nikki Really nearly getting a really intelligent poach D. Yeah, Nikki Prian, a fantastic defender, and I, I love that reset defense from Bex Forth, really shutting down Stubbs in the space she wants to take. So now it's Hauser's turn to attempt the, the full length of the pitch as Eurostar set up in a horizontal stack. We see Ozone protecting that deep straight off the mark. I love how the Eurostars aren't afraid to bring their cutters back into the handler space. Really change levels there. Makes them very dynamic. Kaplman finds Dimanskaya, who shoots straight away for Rebecca Forth. And a shame that this died there, but really great boxing there from the Ozone. Not allowing Bex Forth to readjust as she saw that disc dying behind her. You see some conversation between Sinegeni and Forth there on the reception. Sinegeni not afraid of that contact and really kind of leans in and, and retains her position. I don't think there was anything illegal about that. No legs or arms involved in, in the positioning. So that was what we call a clean D. It's great. Wooten in the middle of the field, backwards a little bit to Stubbs. You'd like to see Ozone gain yards on every pass, not lose anything into their own end zone with this wet field. Over to Hines. Nice handler movement to Stubbs. Just a bit too inside for Wooten. And Eurostars look to take this gift. 
Rebecca for slicing through the two ozone players there to find, I believe, Sarah Eklund in the end zone. And it's too bad Matsunaga got a little bit caught between poaching onto the near reset and staying honest on Hauser. And you see she maybe could have gotten a D on this initial pass to fourth, but doesn't quite get in there. So there she's sort of halfway, and then Stubbs can't quite set her mark for fourth. Rallies off that nice around backhand break. Yeah, great speed there from the Urissa, uh, switching the sides of the pitch in a matter of seconds. So I know that the Eurostars have some zone Ds up their sleeve, so this might be a time where we could see that to, again, really make Ozone work against that. They, that's how they got their first D of this game, and uh, maybe they'll see that again to try and make them take lots of passes. Maybe they would put a second person deep to prevent against the, the long ball, but as you see, Wooten was out there for that last point for Ozone is not back on the field now, so the, the deep space is not as dangerous as it is when she's out there. Yeah, we can see uh, Katie Forth on this line alongside Maya Millick and Francesca Scarampi. Forth and, and Millick have been absolutely outstanding on the handler marks throughout this campaign. Yeah, Millick, Millick has been extremely impressive. She seems like someone who is able to put the disc to a high percentage space deep. She's not always right on target, but she knows her teammates are going to make plays. Uh, Sort of, sort of the mantra from my old team, Seattle Riot. If you put it where your teammates can make a play, that's good enough. And so Millick, Millick is one of my favorites on the Eurostars. Makes everyone look good. You bet. <laughs> Seville out to the centering space in midfield. Right at the 35-yard line. Sagging defense from the Eurostars. Really nice making the handlers work between them. A little too high for the intended receiver, but Travaglini cleans it up. That pass from Perivier. Now back to Seville. Nice bending backhand. Lovely D by Scarampi, just able to take that space in front of Ponitz. And she's tall too, you know, with <laughs> Demonskaya <laughs> out here. Everybody looks shorter than her, but Scarampi is tall as well, right? Yeah, right. Coming in at about 5'11", Scarampi. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> the tallest person on most USAU club teams. Peeled off really early then as well. Read that D very early. Yes. Here we have Bass with the disc up the line. Back to Scrampy. Great snag there from Scrampy, who lets loose straight away to KD4, streaking long. But it's not to be. Great D by Perivier. That's actually a help D. Oh. Lovely saving grab by Travaglini. Over to Seville. Back to Woodhurst in the middle. Previa, a little stinted cut. Looks upfield to Travaglini, who can't quite handle the wet disc. A shame that the unforced error there from Travaglini after such an outstanding reflex there to keep the disc alive. Yeah. And you know, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of ups and downs in this second half with a wet disc, a wet field getting dark so they're playing purely under the lights which is different for a lot of these players who haven't had the opportunity to play in a showcase situation like this. Eurostar is back on offense with Bass. Bass looking to find Millick early but can't. Finds Lucy Ortel instead. Swings it beautifully across the pitch to Katie Forth. Back to Millick. Eurostar is really using this width whenever they can. A lovely feeding pass there from Lucy Oltel to Sarah Melvin, who's been racking up the points for the Eurostars in this campaign. She came into this game far ahead on the goals for the Eurostars than any other player. And for her debut campaign, really shining. Yeah, I've been extremely impressed by Melvin, just a very confident, deep receiver. And she's been going up against the likes of Octavia Payne and stars on these teams uh, around the country just fearlessly and I really appreciate her from Ireland a place where you don't hear about a lot of star women's athletes coming out of there and she just steps up and beyond the level of these games it's really been great to see absolutely when after that victory against Riot she remarks that she'd never even been to Euros but now she's beaten the world champions so so for Certainly. the American viewers, tell us what Euros are. 
So Euros is um, the club teams around Europe, they qualify much like the US teams would for US nationals. So uh, in the UK, for example, GB would normally get about two or three spots, depending on what region you're in. Um, and Ireland will be, be amongst that too. So if you don't finish in those top three, four positions, you won't be able to compete in Euros at the end of the season, which is kind of the pinnacle for the European clubs when it's not a world's year. Yeah, that's great. So it's sort of like a, co a whole continent-based right. competition structure, which we have here. There are Canadian and Mexican teams playing in the USAU club series as well. Perhaps we'll expand it to the North Americans. That would be <laughs> extremely exciting. Ozone on offense here, looking for a hold. Wooten to Hicks, who's looking for Harris, gets it upfield. Harris joining in the second half. A uh, great poach look, but Hines ends up with it and finds the free receiver downfield. Ozone doing extremely well there with that intense deep pressure from the Eurostars. Jenny Kappelman getting a little hand to it. As we see here. Oh, not quite my mistake, but she was in on the charge. And then Priyan, as we know, a dominant aerial force, but that pass was pinpoint into the hands of the receiver. Yeah, couldn't. That's, uh, that's Maddie Boyd on that catch, an Auburn star who's been recruited over to Georgia from the Alabama scene. And uh, she's really a highly respectable receiver. It's good to see her making some plays out there. This is her first season on Lone Zone. I believe right? so, yeah. yes. Uh, she's straight out of the college scene. It's really, really great to have her bringing some athleticism with her over from the West. So Ozone back on defense. Uh, see what they bring against the Eurostars offense here. Again, maybe we'll see some junk looks in this second half. Trying to get that pull as far downfield as possible to make the Eurostars work it in what looks to be still some light rain here. If anyone out there in the in the virtual world is worried, there there was potentially some lightning seen, but. Uh, really not anything of concern, so that's why the players were back out quite quickly after that delay. Eurostars here on offense. Hotel picking up the disc. Off to Bass. Lovely poach opportunity for Kate Woodhurst. I like that look. <laughs> Milik yet again. Straight up the line to Scarampi, who finds Ines Brazil of Portugal. Nice big faking from Brazil. Finding that space again in the center. Milik yet again, providing that patient offense for the Eurostars. Oh! <laughs> again, a lovely a bit. Extremely athletic a play from Anis Brajel, which we've seen a plenty on this tour, but unfortunately the ground stripped her from the glory. I like that, that uh, term that you use, ground stripped, that you know someone makes an amazing play, but the ground causes it not to stick. And that play by Brigelle is just so, like you said, reflex. She just immediately cares so much to get it. Sinajini trying to get her own grab like that doesn't quite connect. Oh. <laughs> it's a real veteran move by Scarampi to step through and still throw that pass into the end zone as she's getting fouled by Seville, giving Brigelle a chance for it and a second chance. Uh, and even though it doesn't connect, it's going to come back to Scarampi, I think, for an uncontested foul. Sinajini looks like a little rattled after that play. She's putting a ton of pressure on the extremely strong Brigelle. Yeah, no hesitation from Scarampi there. As soon as she saw that number 16 shirt streak into the end zone, she knew what to do. Bass, back to Scrampy, busting up the line, looking for that continuation. D by Andrea Palmer, and unfortunately, there's contact made after the play. It appeared to be after the play, but it doesn't probably matter. I think that's Brigelle's calling that foul as it affected her ability to catch the disc. We'll get a replay here. Yeah, there's Palmer yeah. making the play, but perhaps a dangerous play afterwards. And it looks like the players have talked it out and it's going to stand as a D. In my experience, there's some difference between how that's called internationally using WIFDIF rules and through USAU. And sometimes if there's D 
dangerous contact after the play. It's called more internationally than in the United States. So that was fun to see that they let that play. And here's Ozone ripping it deep. Well-read disc by Fairley, not quite in. Now all the way in to Paige Carver. And the crowd roaring here is the home team for the sensational point on the board. Melvin was tracking her mark all the way down, but... Very nice shot, I believe, from Stubbs down to Fairley, the rookie on Ozone. Maybe that was from Woodhurst, actually, to Fairley. Here's that D again by Palmer. But you know, it's, it's just being that close on D. That's yeah. where you put yourself in a good position where if there's any error at all, any marginal difference on the throw, it's not quite out in front or it's a little too high, you're right there to make that play. And that's great on the break side especially where you can make that kind of play but not be out of position. So well, well done by Palmer getting that disc for her team who's now within three. We've yeah, talked about some of the players on Ozone that are still in college. Um, can you tell me about some of what these Eurostars do when they're not playing Ultimate? Are they ever not playing Ultimate? <laughs> yeah, this team is a really interesting, it's a really special, special team. Uh, so we can start with the Fourth Sisters who've had phenomenal Frisbee careers as well as professional careers. Um, Katie Fourth has worked with elite athletes for many years and also for NASA. Uh, she's an expert physiologist and, as you can see, applies all of that science and knowledge to her own game. That's fascinating, and I know they're also family women, too, uh, right. the force. Both have children of their own uh, that have joined us on the tour. Some are in the booth with us right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got Hugo with us in the booth here, Bex, Bex's second son, and, uh, and they've, they've been wonderful. They're such, such happy children, and we definitely wouldn't have sold as much merchandise without them. <laughs> over the course of this campaign. And it's so amazing for these these children to be able to see their mothers play out here. Uh, I was actually able to bring my daughter with me to Club Worlds this summer. I think she watched me play at Masters Worlds on TV with her dad here at home. And it's just such a special thing for our kids to be able to see us do Absolutely. what we love. Nice big bid there by Harris. A real hot injection of fire into Ozone's defense here in the second half. Pre and staying strong there and holding possession for the Eurostars. We have Yanni Kappelman on the line looking for that reset from Farofi. Farofi, one of three players to have played this Ozone team before, being part of Chris Shout. They matched up against this Ozone team at Worlds a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful inside look from Demenskaya. It's a difficult throw on any night, let alone the rain. <laughs> and there we have it for Ophi with the assist to Nikki Prien. And she'll be looking to avenge that loss that she had with Cusp a couple of weeks ago here. And gets another point on the board for the Eurostars. Just beautiful offense from the Eurostars, playing like every other day, even though there's been rain and it's dark and they're playing under the lights. Just gorgeous. Beautiful what bid at the beginning of that point by Meg there. Harris. She flew Extremely there. strong Just athlete. Excellent hang time. You know, Meg Harris is uh, in physiology herself. She's a physical therapist, uh, which it's always great to have some of those in our community so that, you know, when you're poor and you're a student, you can't quite pay to see all of your specialists that maybe one of your teammates can help you out. Uh, it's very, very nice to have such a, a smart professional woman like Meg on the sidelines and even better to have her out there making plays like that on the field. So you see Eurostar is back on defense. Looking to get a, another break and increase that margin. Remember in this series margins matter. It's not just the wins. And Fury's brilliant performance at the weekend brings Team America knocking on the door again on the heels of the Eurostars, you only have one point above them. Ozone centering to Seville, looking for Previa on the cross, back to Woodhurst on the backhand side, slicing to the middle with Travaglini. Continuing that motion to Ponitz. 
Doherty. Very nice balance by Ozone's offense, sending handlers down into the cutter space, but always having options, only one in each space. Ponnet sends this one for Doherty, who can't quite cherry pick it over the defender. Maybe there was some contact on that play. It looks like a foul with no contest, the open palms. Here's Ponnet's throw. Yeah, getting a bit sandwiched there from the Eurostars D, but. That's right, so if this is Doherty's disc, as soon as she begins walking it out to front line, play begins. It's not a goal because she didn't catch it first and then have it have a foul. It's still hers, possession just outside the end zone. Seville, ever patient with the disc, looking to Emmerich. Looking for Seville on the poor man's break. All the way over to Ponit. And that's just gorgeous offense. That's what a lot of teams now are using where that single reset comes behind the thrower. Here we'll see some of the initiating motion. Seville on the up line gets looked off by Emmerich. And you'll see that Emmerich doesn't throw this until Seville is all the way over and is going to gain advantage on the break side. And so they end up scoring to the break side without having to actually break the mark. And for you students of the game out there, you implement that into your offense. No matter what age you are, you'll be able to expand your offensive vision on any field. Yeah, gorgeous patience, and particularly in this weather, as you said, with the disc being so slippy, you'd, you'd prefer not to take on those those IOs. Right, it's all backhands, it's all pretty easy, and as long as you can release them quickly before the marks get set, it's an easy way to score. So Ozone here back on defense, see if maybe Palmer and her pals can get another block. And interesting, that's often a, a way that the Russians like to play, and the, the East Europeans, that's been... Uh, an interesting journey on as the Eurostars team get to know each other. We all say the word handler resets, but every nation has a different way of doing it, a different style of doing it. Sure, and every team here as well, you know, something that some teams are doing these days are having no reset, and the, the reset will come from the front of the stack when the count is at a certain point, and that gives them two options on either side. It's a little bit riskier, but with more skilled throwers, you're able to do that. Um, some people set up laterally, some diagonal back, and it really is, it's something you definitely have to learn with every new team that you join. Sinagini set to pull, big left-handed backhand. So we see the Eurostars O-line looking straight for a pull play. Finding any Kappelman isolated in the center. Palmer's mark just so good on that, nice and low and active. Kiblitska finding Eklund oh. up the line, who shoots straight away to do mine Skaya. There's a cool. Looks like there was a pick and got now Wooten choosing to match up on her Russian doppelganger. <laughs> just like Demonskaya was matching up on her earlier. Eklund bringing the disc back into play. Trying to get it off that line. Josie Veal on nice that strong mark. Big target in Dumanskaya again. Who ushers for Rolfi rounds. Finding Olivia Hauser in the center. Lovely layoff to Yanni Kalpomun who runs it down beautifully. Lovely quick vision there from Hauser. Not taking that extra time to, to turn around for the forehand. Just a nice quick IO to keep the pace on that disc. So you see here just guiding it into the path of Yanni Kalpelman. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's funny. I have such mixed feelings about that throw because especially these Eurostars, we saw Bas do it with her forehand, you know, forehand on the backhand side, and here a backhand on the forehand side. And fundamentally speaking, that's not something you would necessarily teach athletes to do. But with success like that, it's hard to disagree with it. I think it's really just testament to taking what you were given. She saw that, saw that little gap created by that mark and, and exploited it as soon as, as soon as she was able to. That's right, and especially when it's a backhand on the forehand side, it is more difficult 
for the mark to get a hand block on that without fouling because the disc just stays in the hand so much longer before the release. So if there is any contact on the disc, it's likely still in her hand. Uh, so I see that a bit more. Um, but I do think there is that higher risk on that, and you see that even that pass into the end zone goes a bit past the intended receiver. Right. If there had been a defender there, would have been in trouble, but perhaps she saw that there wasn't, and that's why she chose to throw it. Eurostars on defense, Scarampi with the pull. Yeah, it's nice to see such a high level of trust in a team that has only been playing together for just over a week. Palmer centering to Seville. Good flat mark from Katie Forth. Over to Stubbs, who's looking deep to Perivier. Oh, makes an outstanding bid, but can't quite hold on to it. That's a shame how much that disc zings, but yeah, great play there. I think if India would have that back, she'd like to float it a bit more to Marie instead of having it fly so low. But again, it's a great look, and field position-wise, this is not so bad. Ozone trusting that they'll get this back. You see Meg Harris sort of hanging out deep because she's guarding that fourth cutter in the horizontal stack. Seeing Katie Forth as the active cutter, you're always a little worried she's going deep for Scarampi. Bass collecting in the center, ushering those cuts under, finds Brugel, who lays it off to Lucy Hotel on the line. Scarampi's looking for that long shot straight away and finds it in Issa Prada, but unfortunately just into straight into the path of the Ozone defense. Clamping around Prada. Trevaglini having a very nice read on that. Again, she was on that far side cutter and was able to go help her teammate with the disc. Here's Seville looking deep to Previer. There's that floating nature. Previer is able to go up for it nice and strong. Harris fighting for an open space in the end zone. Previer finds Stubbs. Katie Forth playing extremely smart defense, starting in the lane and then closing when the cut happens. Forcing Travaglini backwards, back to Stubbs, to Travaglini. Katie Forth looking at the cutters while she's marking, just intensely smart defender. Stubbs with the disc now, still 10 yards out of the end zone, over to Travaglini. Oh, lovely D by Brinjel, I believe. Really fantastic work from you, Sose. You mentioned Katie Forth's intelligence defense, but Maya Millick is also an incredibly intelligent player. When that long disc went off, she made sure she dropped off her man, not allowing it to be a one-on-one -on -one in the end zone and forcing Ozone to be much more patient with the disc and eventually generating that turn. Yeah, Kate Hines made a beautiful cut around the back of the stack. No picks were called, but the throw was just a little bit behind her. So Bass finding Brigelle again in the center. Brevier making a great read in that lane. And, you know, a long point like this, Ozone has more players, has not been on the road for a week or more, and, you know, this may play into their advantage, perhaps fatiguing some of the Eurostars while they score. Great point. Seville to Travaglini on that goal. Yeah, great point. Uh, speaking to uh, Kate Woodhurst earlier, they've taken a nice break since, since US Open. Uh, they say they tried to have one off weekend a month and that happened to fall on this weekend and they respected that, but she did encourage Minnie at the beach this weekend with a lot of them. And um, yeah, that definitely will be playing a factor for sure. Yes, Andrea Palmer is getting continues. married this, this fall and so her bachelorette party was this past right. weekend. And so many of the Ozone women having fun and celebrating Andrea and her, her future husband, Eric, this weekend. Oh, congratulations. Yes fun times. Uh, Andrea's been my assistant at Paideia for four years now, five years now, and uh, we're very happy for her. She's a great defender and a great teacher, great coach, and we're really excited for Eric to get to be her life partner. And there's a lot of fun going on around the stage and the crowd are great tonight. The Ozone players are clearly very much enjoying themselves. Yes, this is such a treat for them. They, they've probably played more on film in the last year than the preceding 30 years. So this is really an awesome opportunity for the Atlanta women to play at Worlds, the US Open, Nationals, and now against the Eurostars. Cool. Eurostars looking to extend that margin again, coming out on O. Here's that 2-3-2 from Ozone, trying to make the Eurostars throw lots of passes into unfamiliar spaces. The Eurostars popping straight through finding those quick give and goes in that space. Ozone starting to slow them down. 
Damascaya takes on that handler mark, finds the break side, and Hauser sends one to Eklund in the end zone, who brings it in to bring the score up to 13-8 for the Eurostars now. 39, apologies. Yeah, it's very nice space. And you see on this swing from Damascaya, Emmerich is about to set the mark, and she's actually checking behind her downfield to see where the threats are, but she doesn't have time to set the mark as she just delivers that beautiful pass, Hauser to Eklund. And Eklund from Sweden, correct? Correct. So has, and she plays club there? She does, She played, but she played with uh, Atletico this season for ah. uh, World Club Championships, who are a Finnish team, but not to be in Sweden for much longer. She's actually moving to be with her boyfriend in France uh, after the tour. Uh, she'll be moving to the French Swiss border, and so her closest team will be uh, in Basel, Free Speed. Ah. So I'm sure they're very excited to uh, to welcome her into their ranks. Yeah, I uh, so I think that means that one of our Atlanta locals, Lizzie Jones, was actually her teammate on Atletico. Um, she joined the Finnish team at Club Worlds this summer as well. I think a connection through an old coach in Boston, and I was sitting next to Lizzie as we were on our way back from the Elite Select Challenge two nights ago, and Lizzie just said it was an amazing experience to get, she'd never played International Ultimate, and to play with women from halfway across the world in a different style was just amazing. So I'm sure getting to be Sarah Eklund's teammate was <laughs> certainly part of that. Wonderful. It's fantastic to be able to explore other countries' styles, and it's not just a, a European-America divide. Franz Grampy played with the Russians this year with brilliance, and Scrampy's a player who we've known on the scene for a long time now, maybe over 12 years, has been a big figure on GB for many, many a year. And uh, she said that first training with the Russians was just three solid hours of running, <laughs> then a break, three solid hours of running. And at the end, she said to the Russian coach, look, if I'm not right for this team, you can, <laughs> you can cut me. <laughs> he, he or she probably said, well, someone has to throw to these runners. <laughs> and she said, probably, okay. Yeah, but, um, I, I actually got a chance to see that Brilliance team play, I believe, it wasn't the quarterfinals, maybe the pre-quarters at Worlds. Mm. They lost a really close one to the Japanese team, Huck. Mm. Um, and I, I was shocked at the height on the Russian team yes. and how well and they the pace. used that. Yeah. Oh, they're phenomenal. Yeah. Just such a different style. I love, it's one of the joys of going to Club Worlds is seeing these other teams that are just so different from what we, we see here anywhere in the United States, let alone just here in Atlanta. So Eurostar starting again on defense. Potentially looking for, hope, absolutely looking for another break to see out this game as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, so Ozone's down by four points. They've got nine and the Eurostars are at 13. So they're looking to, like we talked about, uh, lessen the margin so they can only allow for a few points to the Eurostars or potentially even come back. Oh, Fairly no, looks like she was, there. yeah, but perhaps tripped up maybe the defender Shipped in with the feet on her heels. Good spirit and good conversation between Fairley and Brigelle. It's Uncontested. all no contest. Palms to the sky means I agree with the call, so Fairley will retain possession of the disc. Matsunaga isolated downfield. We'll see what she does with all that space. Fairly looking to Stubbs and then Seville in the handler set. Matsunaga on the sideline. Carver's open behind. Matsunaga doesn't see, and now it's back to, to Carver, still on the sideline. Up to Stubbs, hot, hotly contested by the defender. Back to Seville, to the far side for Wooten. Really great strong body there from Stubbs. Yeah, back through Seville to Wooten. Veal attacking the cone and looks it in with two hands for the goal. Fantastic strong point. This experienced handlers are just wonderful. And the Eurostars knew that coming into the game, how, how powerful this own zone handler, handlers are, the likes of Stubbs and, and Wooten and Trivigali. Yeah, Wooten, Seville and Stubbs there on that point, just unrelenting refusing to throw a turnover and using each other, staying very patient until Veal breaks away. 
<laughs> Andrea Palmer extremely happy to see her <laughs> former athlete Josie Beal catching that goal as teammates. So fun. Many Paidea girls here in the crowd watching their coaches and former teammates. Uh, I'm sure there are some watching while they're doing their homework. <laughs> right? <laughs> All my students. <laughs> And we shouldn't forget to thank uh, Atlanta Hustle, who are hosting this event for us. Yeah, a lot of the Hustle guys are here in the crowd cheering on and have helped with the setup and selling the merchandise when the fourth children aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, they've been extremely helpful in showcasing women in the sport. The open players here get so much more of, of the showcase vibes and there's so much more film of them out there by nature of how the sport has developed in the professional leagues and no one's more excited uh, to support women in the sport than, than the people who have had that opportunity already. And we're very grateful to them and to Atlanta Rosen also of course for giving these European athletes this kind of platform. It's the Mad Sky receiving the disc laying off to Hauser. Goes in with very poachy handler defense Stopping the pull play. Lots of space in the middle, which is finally exploited by Prien. But again, great hustle from the Atlanta Ozone. Oh, lovely extension there from Yanni Kalpelman. Big, strong frame, bringing that disc down. Let's go on the line. Finding a very open demand Skyer, who launches a beautiful cross field throw. <laughs> And a fantastic grab again from Yanni Kappelman, who skies up, posterizing her mark. This is my play of the game. Even though there's no dives and not a lot of defense involved, this throw is gold. She sees her receiver, steps way out around the mark, not a travel in sight, flies well over the stack so no defender can make that play. And Kappelman uses her strength checks her feet, makes sure she's in, and goodness, that's a beautiful play. What a beautiful play that brings the score up to 14-10 now, and Eurostars are just one point away from taking home the victory, and three America's Pro Cup points as it stands. So yes, Eurostars would love to break to win here, doing it on defense, and Ozone, again, would like to hold and at least get one more break to save a point for the Americans here on this Eurostar tour, tour. So Miranda, do you think we're likely to see a, a Eurostar zone come down for this, for this point? You know, we haven't seen it much. We haven't seen it a, a ton. And, you know, <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't <laughs> fix it. So they've been playing great person-to-person -person defense, and they, they see their matchups. Uh, I, I would say they probably come person to person again. I hope the Ozone overthrows deep, deep receivers again. We'll see. We've got Stubbs centering to Wooten. Pre P Seville isolated in the lane. It's great to see her gaining yards downfield before she gets the disc. Making a nice catch, getting it back to Wooten. Looks off the swing. Hicks with the disc on the backhand side. Lovely drag cut by Doherty following Seville's clear. Now looking back to Stubbs, mid reset cut. Seville powering up the line, reading her defense perfectly. Trying to bend the disc around a couple defenders to Doherty, who has to go with one hand because of the good positioning of Brigel and Scaranthi down there and can't quite snag it above them. She's fantastic agility from Rogel. She makes such big adjustments in the last minute to get in front of the receiver there. And Brigel, really just a phenomenal surprise on this tour. I have really enjoyed seeing her play. She's so quick, but clearly uses her body, even though she's smaller you know, than her giant teammates, <laughs> uses her body so well and has great throws to boot. Yeah, her layout's already my desktop mm -hmm. background. <laughs> So Bass centering to Milik. Milik from Denmark. He's, she's led the Copenhagen Hucks for many years and coached and captained the Danish national team. 
Prada resetting again. It's the Scandinavian stalwart for this team. Finding Ortel and demanding that disc back as she charges at the line and sends it to Anis Brazil for a beautiful final point in this game here in Atlanta. Just a gorgeous bit, just a gorgeous specimen of play. Watch how Milik looks, oh, we're not gonna see it on the film, but she actually looks downfield as she's cutting up line for the give and go to check and make sure she's not cutting anyone off. She's not, she gets it in the space and she puts a beautiful huck to Brigel. And Kate Hines even can't catch her on that lovely cut. Such a great game aware, aware player, always monitoring where everyone is on the pitch before she makes a move. And that really was her point, that final one. It's nice to see Millix Hux right on target tonight. And where, where are the Eurostars headed next? You know, they, they've just come back from a 15-10 loss and they've got a 15-10 win here. Where, where are you headed? We're headed to face the US Open champions, uh, Boston Brute Squad. Very, very excited. I think as the girls have been discussing the opponents on this tour, they feel like Eurostars have a similar style to Brute Squad. Um, and it's one of the games they're most looking forward to, to matching up against. Of course, I, <laughs> there are no easy buckets for the Eurostars on this tour. <laughs> they have to fight for every game. I'm so glad to see everyone staying healthy throughout these games. I can't wait to see who Nikki Prien is gonna match up against. Is it gonna be <laughs> Claudia Tajima? Is it gonna be Becky Malinowski? Uh, I can't wait to watch it. Uh, what day is that? The next game. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Well, I will certainly be tuning in from my couch in Atlanta, Georgia. And Eurostar's heading in strong with a healthy four-point margin now on the board. 7-3 to the Eurostars. And I'm very excited to see the new players match up against this Boston Brute squad as well. Uh, like we discussed before, the likes of Sarah Melvin, Dina Demanskaya today, having a great match up against, against Wooten. And Ozone should be very proud of this second half. You know, they, they took five, they took half at, at only three points. And so they scored seven points equal to the Eurostar's seven points in this second half. So that's really nothing to be ashamed of. Of course, that's good experience for them in their next tournament. I'm sure they'll want to come out stronger. It's hard after a long work day to come out here, people coming here late uh, from work, from wherever they are and stepping right on the field and making big plays. Uh, I'm sure they will learn from that and enter their next tournament with new vigor. And I, I pity their opponents. <laughs> I think at the uh, Pro Flight finale is their next is their next stop. So unfortunately, we can't get the sound on that. But the efforts being made here to engage with as many people as possible on this tour, this is why the Spirit Circle is being shared with the crowd and and the Eurostars players are, are sharing why this experience is so important to them. And these are things that we've discussed already, Miranda, but the visibility of this tour is so important for the growth of, of Women's Ultimate, um, not only in the States, but especially in, in Europe. And yeah. we're very grateful for the partnership of all the teams here who've agreed to play us. And it's just so great too for, for me now as I <laughs> enter my twilight years in the Ultimate scene, uh, as a coach primarily, I can go back and look at this film and if I have a really tall, lanky handler, I can point at this game and say, watch Wooten and Demanskaya. Or I, if I have a really strong cutter, I can say, go watch Hauser and Kappelman. And they, my athletes can see what they should be like. And there just wasn't that for so long. Um, when I was growing up, I didn't really have anyone to watch. I watched other sports uh, on TV, mostly males. And now with this resource, it and it being on YouTube forever, uh, we have that as coaches to be able to show our athletes who maybe are young and not able to make these plays yet exactly what it should be looking like. And my hope is that you know the coaches, the, the captains of Ozone, India Stubbs and Kate Woodhurst, they coach tons of young athletes here in Atlanta. Perhaps that's what they're saying in this huddle too. Absolutely, and likewise growing up for me, yeah, there was there was some footage um, as I was a junior, but again, very few bits of film for, of European teams and particularly European women. And exactly why players have been plucked from obscurity in this tour is because we're so desperate to develop the scenes in countries like Latvia and Spain, um, Portugal. And it's very important to have those 
figures that you can look up to that really resonate with you? Of course. And I, I know that my girls out there in the crowd, they're listening to this spirit circle, this huddle, and they're hearing things that they want to be able to do. And now they, they, can, they have a site, they have a goal for where they can be this year, next year, in a few years. It's exciting That's stuff. It's such an exciting time. And we'll be sh guaranteed to see this tour for the next two years, at least. So much, much more high level Frisbees to come from the Eurostars. We'll just see the final highlights of this game. Some really beautiful athleticism for both sides. Both sides using the pitch extremely well, moving the disc very fast. <laughs> And we can't wait to rejoin you as we hit up Boston in a couple of days' time for the fifth game of the Pro Americas Cup Tour as, we f as the Eurostars face Boston Brute Squad, current US Open champions. Can they upset again? Can they disrupt the status quo as they did in Seattle? We hope you join us to find out.